Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the one who can never fail. We worship you. We bless your holy name for what you've done in the life of your son. Thank you for what you've done in his family. Thank you for what you've done in this commission. Oh Lord, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, today as we have come together to praise you, I pray that everyone here in need of a miracle, we get one before the service is over. Thank you, Almighty God. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, shake hands with one or two people and tell them how hard. Today will be special for you. And then you may please be seated. Uh, greetings to all the excellencies. Greetings to the royal majesties. Greetings to my spiritual fathers. <laughs> <laughs> And greetings to you all, particularly the musicians. <laughs> You've done extremely well. I wasn't expecting that I would be asked to preach. I thought I would just come here today to have prepared my special agbada to come and celebrate with uh, our son. I mean, it's only in the Pentecostals that you have uh, a pastor calling a bishop a son. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they now told me that uh, it is the request of the bishop that uh, the pastor must preach. <laughs> and if you're a pastor and you love yourself, when a bishop orders, <laughs> you better obey. <laughs> so I, I decided that, well, I think I know what I would do. I would do what the elders normally do in those days when there's a problem in the town and KBC doesn't know what to do, we call all the chiefs together and say, we have this problem. What do you think we should do? And Chief A will say, this is what I think. Chief B will say, this is what I think, and so on. And when they've all finished, uh, the KBC will summarize everything and say, this is what I think. <laughs> And so they always say it's wise because he combines everything. So I began to follow the program since Monday. I've been listening to every preacher, trying to take notes so I can combine everything. <laughs> and uh, when I began to hear uh, Abiyoye talking about impact and influence and greatness. I said, ah, this one is bigger than my own. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, well, I know what I will do. I will just read one beautiful passage in the Bible, ask people to shout three hallelujahs, and then... <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Isaac came on the stage and chose that passage. 
<laughs> and then began to break it down. <laughs> uh, praise is individual, praise is responsive, praise is, I say, oh God. <laughs> Look at this boy, he has stolen my summer. <laughs> But I will still read that passage <laughs> and add my own little ones to his own big ones. And then, in, you know, when he was preaching from time to time, he would say, hey, somebody raise his hand and say, thank you, Jesus. And I said, no problem. When I get to that place, I will say, let somebody raise his hand and shout hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time I finish, they won't know who, who's, who's someone is the original. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Psalm 103, from verse 1 to 5. Psalm 103, from verse 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. You can see that uh, a man can quickly go through this and get people shouting, and then he can go and sit down. You can say, ah, if you have a soul, shout hallelujah. <laughs> and then he says, all that is within me, bless his holy name, I can say, Touch your stomach and tell everything inside. Liver, kidney. I say, if you are still there, join me in shouting, Hallelujah. <laughs> and when he said, don't forget all his benefits, I can say, has God done anything for you at all? You say, all right, then shout, Hallelujah. I can stop from there and go and sit down. <laughs> if we are to talk about the things we should thank God for in the life of our beloved bishop, we can count at least 70. But if we are to take each one, one by one, by the time we finish, it will be 71. And so since we don't have that time, and uh, fortunately, <laughs> Pastor Obas and Joe had uh, done a lot of work. <laughs> I will just mention about three or so, quickly. Number one, we want to thank God today because he's alive. And we are alive. We thank God because he's alive because according to Isaiah chapter 38 from verse 18 to 19, Isaiah 38 from verse 18 to 19, the Bible made it clear, only the living can praise the Lord. If the bishop is not alive today, we will not be here. But you too, you are alive. And the joy of that for you is that there is hope for you. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4, 
Ecclesiastes 9 verse 4, as long as you are still alive, even if they look at you as if you are a dog, a living dog is still better than a dead lion. But you see, when you look at the life of the celebrant, and you see what God had done for him, because it wasn't like this at the beginning. Mm -mm. There are some of us who, <laughs> who know a little bit about the days of small beginnings. If the Almighty God can take somebody from the days of little beginnings and bring him to a level where, whether you like him or, or you don't like him, or, you can't ignore him. Then you know there is hope for you. <laughs> there was a time, some of you may not know, that if you come to visit Bishop Oyedepo in Lagos, and it's breakfast time, he is eating bread with margarine and he will give you bread with much green. If you ask for egg, he will ask you to go and lay it. <laughs> Am I lying? <laughs> you want to eat egg for breakfast? Hey, go and lay it. <laughs> Today, if you say you want an egg, he will ask you, are you sure only one would do? God moved him from very low beginnings and has brought him to this level. He's alive and you are alive. That's why the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise God. Because as long as you are still breathing, nobody can write you off. <laughs> if they write you off, God will surprise them. <laughs> so all of you who are here who are still breathing. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Number two. We should thank God because he is born again. I mean, this, <laughs> when I heard how long ago he has been born again, I trembled where I was sitting. Because he got born again before me, you know. <laughs> he could have been my spiritual father. He's been born again a long time. But the beauty about his being born again is that he has access to the blood. The blood that cleanses from all sins. And it is that blood that has given him victories up to today. According to Revelation chapter 12 from verse 10 to 11. Revelation 12, 10 to 11. They overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb. You may not know how many battles he has fought. Maybe one day when he's writing his uh, autobiography, he will tell you. But I happen to know a little bit about how many battles. If the blood is not as powerful as the Bible says it is, he will not be here today. The wife will not be here today. At least one of the children won't be here today. No, I mean, I don't, I'm sure he wouldn't mind my sharing just one of the testimonies of victories with you. One day, he was the last to leave the office. 
He locked the office. He went home. The following day, he came back to the office. Nobody had entered into his office, but the doors were locked. And he sat down at his desk and opened the drawer. And inside the drawer was a dead snake. I uh, know you, you, you haven't heard that. How did the snake get into the office? How did the snake get into a drawer that was locked? I don't know. But one thing I know is this. His life proves that there is power mighty in the blood. And because he got born again, and many of us are here today because we are also born again. Many of us won't come here if he wasn't born again. I mean, we, we have come to celebrate a bishop, not a chief high priest of FIFA. Because he is born again and you are born again, we can rejoice together. Because if there is power mighty in the blood, and that power in the blood gave him victory. The same power in the blood can give us victory. And so the next set of people who is going to shout are those who have been washed in the blood. So if you are a child of God and you have access to that powerful blood, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Number three, we are here to thank God today because the bishop can speak. Oh, many of you who are his converts, you are able to give your life to Jesus Christ because you heard him preach. And when we are talking about preachers, <laughs> I know quite a few preachers. I've been around the world. There are preachers and there are preachers. The man we are celebrating speaks like an oracle of God. I mean, you know that. <laughs> when he opens his mouth, wisdom will be flowing out like a river. Am I right? <laughs> we are here because he can speak. Not only because he's speaking brought salvation to many, but suppose he wants to come here to thank God today, and he cannot talk. It is because he can see speak. That's why we are here. And he can speak, and you too can speak. You see, David said in Psalm 34, you can read it from verse 1 to 3. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Then in verse 3, he says, hey, come, bless the Lord with me. Many of us don't know the value of the fact that we can speak. You probably have had the testimony of, uh, of the, the story of a man here in Lagos. It was one of those people they called the socialites. One of those people that until they arrive, the party has not started. Wealthy man, famous, and then he had a stroke, the kind of stroke that takes away the voice. And they took him to the best hospital in London. And I was visiting. Um, we happen to have a common friend. And that friend said, please come and pray for my friend. And I went to the hospital to pray for him. When we got to the room, the wife was there, but as we were coming, the wife got up and left. After we have prayed, we were sitting on the chair and he was lying on the bed. He tried to tell us something. 
He parted the bed where the wife was sitting, pointed to the direction that the wife left by, and made a sign as if to say, ah, go and call my wife. And that's what we thought. You want us to go and tell your wife to come back? She said, uh-uh. He kept on patting the bed. Oh, um, you want your friend to come and sit where your friend was sitting? Uh-uh. Oh, it's the pastor. You want the pastor to come and sit next to you where your wife? Uh-uh. It took him 30 minutes and he was sweating before we finally got what he was saying that my wife who just left is coming back after 30 minutes. How long does it take you to say praise the Lord? We are here today because the bishop wants to praise God. His voice had not been taken away. We are here today to join him in praising God because we have not lost our voice. As many of you who can see speak, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Let me take just one point more because of time. We are here today because the bishop can hear from God. <laughs> it takes somebody who can hear from the Holy Spirit to come to start this big work in order. Because some of you may not know it. Thank God things have changed. But in the past, when people like me were younger, I'm still young, I'm only 82. <laughs> Otta was the headquarters of witches. And when you want to say somebody is extremely wicked, you will say it's as wicked as utter witch. As you have heard that one before. <laughs> if you do not hear from God and somebody asks you to go and put your headquarters at the headquarters of witches, <laughs> you will say thank you very much. But he heard from God. And the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 14. That's why we are not that today. Because he hears from God. And when, you, when they were reading about his uh, achievements, they, they would say, at such and such a time, he received a direction. Go and do this. At such and such a time, go and do that. When God is the one telling you to go and do something, you can be sure the thing is already done. When God says, go to altar, that's where I want you to start. It is already settled, as we have. <laughs> As we heard from Pastor Pastor John, <laughs> he came after Baba came. But now he has taken over. <laughs> because God asked him to come. Now, the beauty of that for you is that if he can hear from God, and God is no respecter of persons, you are here today, and you too can begin to hear from God. Yeah. 
I remember the first time I had prophecy. I was a young Christian at the University of Lagos several years ago. Just born again. And then somebody took me to the fellowship of all Christians. And they, oh, I enjoyed the fellowship. They were singing and praising God. I didn't know many of the songs, so I just went along making a joyful noise. Then all of a sudden, as if there's a signal from heaven, everybody suddenly became silent. And one fellow started and began to prophesy. Thou said the Lord. And he went on. And I nudged the man who took me there. When did God say that? And the fellow said, shh. I said, I'm not hearing anything. He says, keep quiet. God is speaking. That day I asked God, I want to hear you. I want you to, I want just like that fellow, because I want to be sure. That's why nobody can prophesy a lie when I'm around. Because I will ask that, is that you? It wasn't long after that. You know, the Bible says, blessed are those who do hunger and thirst, for they shall be satisfied. It wasn't long after that that God began to speak to me. You know, there are some people here, you haven't heard from God before, you will hear from him from now. And you know the beauty of it? I see heart from God this morning. Mm. And what did he say? He asked me to tell you that your tomorrow will be all right. <laughs> he said, are you really sure? Oh, oh, yes. One fellow came to me not too long ago. Probably you had this story. Don't worry, I'm about to close. And he said, sir, I hear you are a prophet. I said, I'm not a prophet, I'm a pastor. Uh, but I hear that whatever you say, God said, always comes to pass. I said, God has been faithful. He said, can you tell me my future? I said, that's easy. All you have to answer is one question. He said, what's the question? Are you born again? Are you a child of God? He said, no. I said, your future will be terrible. He said, how do you know? I've not even told you my name. You don't know my parents' name. I say, yeah. <laughs> I don't need to know. It is written. Say ye to the wicked, he shall be ill with them. He said, that there's no prophecy that will override the word of God. He said, ah, okay. Suppose I say, I am born again. I'm a child of God. I can tell you then your tomorrow will be all right. Ah, how do you know that it is written? I said, chapter 3, verse 10. Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with him. So those of you who are already born again, with assurance that I heard from God, <laughs> from the Bible, that your tomorrow is going to be all right, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> but if you are here and you have not yet given your life to Jesus, You've been coming to church, you've been pretending, but you know you are still living in sin. Uh, unless you change your ways, <laughs> the future will be terrible. But you know what? 
You can make today your day. You can surrender your life to Jesus Christ today. This is a great day in the life of our beloved bishop. It can be one of the greatest days of your life. The Bible didn't say teach us to number our years. It has us to teach us to number our days. Today can be your own day of celebration if you give your life to Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask you in the next two, three minutes, if you are not sure of your salvation, if you have not been washed in that blood, that you want to be saved, you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, please come to the altar here. Come very quickly. And I will pray with you. And Jesus will save your soul. And this day will become not just a day of celebration for the bishop, but a day of celebration for you. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, please come very quickly. I will count from one to ten. I'm counting now. One. Please keep clapping. They are coming. Two. Oh yes, let this day be your day of rejoicing. Let this day be your own birthday, birthday in the Lord. Three. Keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Four. God bless you. Come very quickly. Come very quickly. Oh yes. Come very quickly. After today, then you can be sure that your tomorrow will be all right. Come very quickly. Five. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. For keep clapping. They are coming, they are coming. Six. Come, come. The Lord is calling you. Let this day be your own day of salvation. Seven. So when they are talking about birthdays, you'll be able to say, on the 78th birthday of the bishop, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And this day will become a day you will never forget. Hurry up, hurry up. Eight. Hurry up. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Nine. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now, those of you already in front and those of you on the way, cry to the Lord now. You say, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Let your blood wash me clean. Lord, I will serve you for the rest of my life. Give me salvation today, just like you gave salvation to the bishop and you turn his life around. God, please save my soul. And the rest of us, please let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. Intercede for them for just another one minute and then we'll pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word, and thank you for these people who have responded to the altar call. They have called on you, Lord, for salvation. Please save their souls. Amen. Have mercy on them. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Write their names in the book of life. And from now on, let them become children of God. 
and all the benefits of the children of the Almighty God make available to them. Amen. From now on, any time they call upon you, please answer them by fire. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Ah, now those of you who have come to surrender your life to Jesus, let me hear your own hallelujah now. God bless you. Congratulations. The counselors will attend to you. They will want your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And, and then you'll be able to go back to your seats. Congratulations. Will somebody shout another hallelujah? Hallelujah.